today. Hey. Quick question, Emily. Since we seem to be anticipating uh, new people joining today, should we do the quick uh, roundtable slash introduce yourself uh, oneself at the beginning rather than the end like we usually do? Or is there any preference? Um, usually when we have our first meeting after a security day event where we get a bunch of new members, we usually do introductions. Um, before, especially if we do, we have a really light agenda like today. And then um, we usually talk about ways that new members can become more involved. And I think one other time that we did it, we had some of the pre-existing members talk about like why they joined and some of the things that they have done to help um, inspire new members to be more involved. Um, but it, it's up to you how you want to do it. I, my recommendation would be have everybody go around and introduce themselves as either a new member um, or what they're doing in the SIG. Good idea. I'll take that advice. Thank you. Hello. Good day, Brandon. How's it going? Um, Matthew, are you going to be um, uh, facilitating for us today? Sure. Uh, yeah, I uh, will this today. Yes, unless anyone wants to grab the mic since it was just a big event, uh, uh, whichever works best for the team. I, I had to turn my video off for just a little bit because I'm balancing a nine month old in my left arm and he keeps trying to kick. Uh, he's managed to kick my uh, USB thing unplugged and I had to restart my VM. So oh that was a thing. <laughs> I'll give a couple more minutes before we get things underway and I'll do a little recap at the very end in case anyone uh, joined late and wants to introduce themselves. It looks like um, so far. It looks like the friendly usual cr usual crowd. So let's see. Maybe people um, couponed out.
Okay. Good day, everyone. We're about uh, four minutes in, so I think we'll get things underway. I think my webcam just disconnected. Uh, can I confirm my audio is still coming through? Yeah, we still hear you. Thank you. So uh, taking a suggestion from Emily, we'll change the format just a little bit today uh, since it was just a major event, uh, Cloud Native Security Day the other day. Uh, but the first thing I just want to ask is if anyone would like to volunteer to be a meeting minute taker slash scribe. I posted a link in the group chat to everyone to a link to today's agenda. And if anyone wants to grab the scribe role, that would be appreciated just so we can take minutes as we go along. I think um, oh, yeah. we already got two. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Uh, so today, what uh, we will just start things is uh, I was just going to go through um, alphabetically through the list of attendees and uh, whether someone is a new person to seek security and would just like to introduce themselves or mention why they joined or what interested them. Or alternately, if someone's already been a member of the team for some time now and would like to give just a quick uh, elevator pitch slash spiel of uh, why they joined or what they uh, gain out of being a member by all means. And if uh, uh, you'd rather uh, not, uh, just mention no update and I'll just uh, move on to the next attendee. So with that, uh, I'm just going to go uh, alphabetically down the list unless anyone wants to jump in. Uh, Ash, may I uh, send the mic your way? Might still be getting set up. I'll move on. Uh, yeah, it looks Brandon. like a couple of people got uh, connecting. Uh, yeah, I can start. Thank you. Um, so, so Kind of just a quick introduction. Um, my name is Brandon. I'm from IBM Research, um, and I work on containers slash cloud native security stuff. Uh, a lot of my background is around image security, so signing, encryption, uh, stuff like that. We are also working around um, trusted platform governance, so things like um, attesting hardware all the way up to the software stack. Um, being able to figure out what uh, what machines are being run by talking to the TPM and things like that. Um, so that kind of stuff. Um, and so SIG security is, is um, kind of a place where a lot of these discussions also happen. That's, I get a lot of the discussions that happen here. Um, I've also participated in uh, security assessments and things like that. They are really uh, fun experiences. Uh, it's something that it's easy, something easy to kind of jump into as well. Um, other than that, I think we have a ton of other <laughs> activities that uh, I think Emily will, will, um, will talk a little bit about Six Security Day uh, and the white paper stuff. So. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, Ash. Uh, would you like to do a quick introduction? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm Ash Narkar. Uh, I am one of the maintainers of the Open Policy Agent. And for those who don't know, it's an open source general purpose policy agent. Uh, so if you all want to contribute uh, to policy, if you're interested in policy enforcement, uh, uh, reach out to us, join the OPA project. And if any questions, feel free to ask here or on the OPA Slack. Thanks. Thank you, Ash. Uh, onward. Dan, would you like to provide a quick introduction? Hi, I'm Dan Shaw, um, chair here at uh, SIG Security. Um, been involved in this um, now for, you know, coming on three years. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, uh, this sort of draws upon my background uh, in, in security and um, it's been a you know, great opportunity to sort of blend uh, you know, kind of a decade of experience uh, on the app side of things uh, and, uh, you know, help ensure that, that we're building on a solid foundation of, of security first. Thank you, Dan. Next up we have Emily. I am Emily Fox. I work for the US National Security Agency. I'm one of the tech leads in SIG Security. I am one of the co-chairs for Security Day, and I am the lead for the Cloud Native Security White Paper. 
Thank you, Emily. Next, we have Gadi. If I got that right, would you care to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hey, everyone. This is Gadi here. Um, by way of background, um, presently I'm the CTO and one of the founders of uh, Alcid, um, which is a company that is purely focused on security for Kubernetes and um, service mesh. So mainly uh, focused on runtime security, security on the uh, Kubernetes audit log and everything in between. And presently uh, I am participating in the um, cloud native security white paper. Thank you. Next up we have Justin. Good day, Justin. Hello. Um, so I'm Justin Cormack. I am the um, CNCF TOC liaison for SIG Security as I'm on the TOC and I've been involved with SIG Security since um, quite a long time ago before it was officially SIG Security. Um, I also a maintainer of Notary project and interested in supply chain security in particular, among other things. Um, and um, yeah, my day job, I'm at Docker working on containers. Thank you, Justin. Next we have Mark. Good day, Mark. I'll come, I'll come back to you, Mark, uh, if uh, you'd like to do an introduction. Uh, next we have Pratik. Good day, Pratik. Sorry. Hey, folks. Okay. Uh, myself, Pratik Lotia. I work for Charter Communications, which is an ISP in the United States. Uh, I've been working uh, on uh, some container security stuff uh, at the company, focusing on secrets management, a bit of service mesh, uh, container scanning, and things, uh, things like that. I've attended a few of uh, the working groups so far, and uh, so far it's been uh, doing great, and I'm uh, eager to get more involved with the community. Thank you. I see Mark's uh, camera's on there. Uh, Mark, would you like to grab the mic now? Sure. Hey, guys, sorry about that. It was hourglass time for me. So I'm uh, the innovation security guy at Synchrony, but I'm really representing myself in this group. Uh, I previously have collaborated with NIST on some of their work and also the DevOps security standard with IEEE. So I kind of bring the external standards conversation into these meetings. Thank you, Mark. Next, uh, I have Michelle. Michelle, would you like to introduce yourself? I'll come back to this attendee. Uh, we're all just getting our mics working. Uh, next, we have Ray. Ray, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, uh, I am from uh, RxM. We are a cloud native consulting training company. I'm also an active participant in the Kubernetes project, uh, being part of the 118 release team and the current 119 release team as well. I also um, actually participate in the, in the documentation of Kubernetes with the website. Um, and I'm actually here to uh, learn more about security and to be more security minded because as a developer in the past, I haven't always been. So I figured this is a good place to start. Thank you, Agreed. Thank you, Ray. And next we have Robert. Robert, would you care to grab the mic? Sure. Hi, uh, Robert Scalia. I've uh, been involved with SIG Security for, gosh, about the last year or maybe longer at this point. I'm co-chair of the policy working group uh, where we look at uh, specifically Kubernetes related policies um, and more broadly how that maps to different compliance frameworks and uh, policy validation. Uh, for this group, uh, specifically uh, leading the cloud custodian uh, security review process. So I'm, I'll get on my soapbox and ask for volunteers if you want to try the uh, process here at SIG Security to review one of the CNCF projects. We're looking for all the help we can get. Um, and you can join the, the Slack channel for SEC assessment uh, custodian. I think I, I put that incorrectly in the notes now that I look at it. <laughs> so I'll correct that. But if anybody wants to, to chat or speak up, uh, we're happy to have some volunteer help on that effort. Thank you, Robert. Would it be possible to also throw those links into the group chat here in uh, Zoom? Uh, yes, I'll, uh, I think I'll link that to the GitHub issue 
and that'll probably be the, the most expedient. Perfect. Thanks again. Yeah, I dropped I dropped the link in for you, Robert. Thank you. And next up, we have Rowan. Good day, Rowan. Hello there. Uh, I'm Rowan. I'm the uh, head of security at Control Plane. We're a cloud native uh, security consultancy out of London uh, that was founded by Andy Martin. Uh, joined uh, SIG Security to uh, try and contribute to the cloud native uh, security white paper that, that Emily is leading. Thank you, Ron. Next up, we have TK. Good day, TK. Sorry, uh, can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, you're coming through five by five. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> I was on mute, I guess, when I was saying. Yeah, I've been with uh, SIG Security, I think, for a while now. Um, before it became SIG Security, I think we used to be safe group, so forth. And my interest is primarily coming from the security aspects of the edge computing. So I am also involved in the IEEE Next Generation future generation networks for looking at 10 years from now. And in between, I suppose, and been working very um, closely with those things and I'm trying to make sure that they are aligned well, I suppose, with the um, CNCF working group. So on the, uh, in case anyone is interested on the INGR, you can look that up in the IEEE, <clears throat> uh, the next generation networks, and you'll see uh, some of the drafts that we are proposing and we're preparing there on the uh, things. And uh, it's still at the very um, initial stage, but we do have some working graph there as well. Um, other than that, I present a, um, a consulting company on the edge computing, basically. So um, we're working on these things and to make sure the cybersecurity is also aligned to the edge side of it. It's pretty much it. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, TK. And if you want, by all means, feel free to post the links to the drafts in the group chat if you if you want to. Sure. It's actually very easy to Google search and INGR and IEEE because it's so widely uh, known. True. Okay. Thank you. And next we have Vinay. Good day, Vinay. Would you care to take the mic? Hi, Matthew. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Vinay Venkatragwan. Uh, I've been part of the uh, SIG security for about five months now, since February this year, I guess. And, um, you know, I uh, wanted to, you know, contribute to the community, bring over, you know, 15 years of uh, work in security enterprise, uh, you know, hybrid cloud, cloud experience. And uh, I've also, I'm also part of a, a, a group at Palo Alto Networks called Prisma Cloud, where we help our customers secure across the entire uh, software supply chain, right, which is, you know, through the build, deploy, run phases. So I thought it was very appropriate. And the some of, one of the contributions I made to the community here is I presented a, a security reference architecture, which I'm hoping can uh, have a place in the cloud native security white paper as well. So very excited to be part of this uh, uh, great group. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. And one uh, person I'll just uh, loop back to because I don't believe they got a chance. Uh, Michelle uh, Trubevka, if I got that right, would you care to grab the mic? Uh, sure. Uh, we've never done this intro thing before, so it freaked me out. Sorry. Um, and I'm in, wit All good. <laughs> I'm in witness protection, clearly. So um, uh, <laughs> I'm Michelle Trubevka. I work for a large financial institution. Um, I, I worked for another large financial institution before that one, and uh, I have... Um, I work primarily on a self-hosted uh, Kubernetes initiative at this institution, um, and I'm an architect, if that helps. I don't know what else you need to know. That covers it. Thank you. And uh, if there's anyone I've missed on the list that would like to introduce themselves, I think we're good, but uh, if I've missed you, please feel free to chime in. And, uh, oh, may as well introduce myself. My name is Matthew Jassa. I'm a Principal engineer and technical lead for essentially cloud development at my employer, Keysight, formerly Ixia. And uh, the CNCF uh, SIG Security Group is kind enough to let me uh, facilitate meetings uh, now and again. And besides that, uh, my major interest is just learning the security landscape for Kubernetes. I come from more an embedded development background in real time operating systems. And now that I'm 
thrown more into the cloud side of things. Uh, I find that just by taking part in these meetings and joining the team, I learn just how much I don't know and how to fill in those gaps as time goes on. So it's definitely helped with my day-to-day -day career. With that said, I think we've got all the introductions out of the way. We already have our minute takers here. And my intent was to move on to check-in slash presentations we have proposed for today. Uh, my understanding is, is there's a post-security day update from Emily, as well as the white paper schedule bump. And I'm just going to quickly check and see if there are any updates uh, we have here. Uh, let's see, I believe all these were covered in the round table we just had. So with that said, I'd like to pass the mic to Emily. Hey everyone, I want to let you guys know that we had a really awesome Cloud Native Security Day at KubeCon this year. It was our first virtual event. Um, and with most first time virtual conferences, we did run into some technical difficulties with the platform. But I think probably um, after the first few talks, everything started to work out, things started to get a little better. Um, I think it was our first time using that platform, so everything seemed to be going pretty well but as we move throughout the day. Um, we had about 369 folks join the Security Day channel for KubeCon. Um, some really good discussions in there. And um, at one point we had 230 viewers for a single talk. Um, we're waiting from, um, to hear back from the CNCF about uh, what kind of transparency metrics they're gonna issue about KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Um, so we can get more information about how wide of an audience we reached with all of the awesome presentations from all of our great presenters. Um, I will be running a virtual retrospective of Security Day and the security events channel. Um, and then we can close out that ticket and create a new issue for SIG Security Day 2020 North America. Um, as another virtual event. So if you are interested in potentially presenting, um, get ready. We will hopefully be putting that call out once we coordinate everything with CNCF again. Um, so that's the update for Security Day. And then next update. So I updated the uh, Cloud Native Security white paper with a new schedule. Um, all of our dates have been bumped out about a week to allow um, the writers and the contributors to have a little bit more time to put in some content with KubeCon consuming everybody's time last week, wanted to make sure that we had plenty of time to get as much information pulled together. And that's about all I have. Thank you, Emily. Does that effectively cover both the two topics then? Yep. Okay, thank you. With that, I'm just going to double check the check-ins. I don't believe we have any SIG representatives uh, with any check-ins today. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we do not have any additional PRs or presentations. So I was just going to ping a couple people here on the call to see if they wanted to provide additional info on the items they previously covered. So I have uh, what Mark Underwood noted here on NIST IR 8006 Cloud Computing Forensic Science Challenges. Uh, Mark, did you want to go into any additional detail there or all good? So yeah, I'll just uh, make it quick. I don't want to uh, give these, let me shut up this other meeting. I don't want to give these two uh, products from NIST uh, too much presentation, but they reflect sort of uh, sub-disciplines in the work that we do in this group that we don't always give a lot of attention to. So one of them is a cloud forensics. So there's a, uh, this is not a standards document. It's kind of just a technical report on that subject. And the other one is actually a tool. It's an installable executable that tries to treat the cyber supply chain as a, um, as a graph basically with multiple nodes in it, where each node is, you know, some facet of the uh, supply chain. Could be another open source project, could be a person, could be a subcontractor and so on. Um, dubious whether that tool is really a great idea, but it gets you thinking about uh, alternative ways of looking at this. Uh, NIST has some other documents around cyber supply chain. Uh, it's, it's a real problem, especially for bigger organizations to try to manage down. If you're heavily invested in tooling to solve security issues 
um, you're confronted with a problem that your lesser capable organizations offer often offer a greater risk to you. So uh, that's it. Just a couple suggestions. Thank you, Mark. And then I believe we have one last thing on here and then we'll just open the floor if anyone wants to grab the mic. So Robert, there was the mention of need uh, cloud custodian security reviewers. Is there anything else we would like to add to that or it's already all covered in the previous discussion? Uh, no, I'm happy to reiterate. We'd uh, love to have folks participate in the security assessment process. So if you've been curious about it or you've kind of watched from the sidelines, it's a, it's a very low risk way to participate kind of uh, roll up sleeves a little bit, but we'll, uh, the ask is very low. And of course, the more volunteers we can get, the more we can distribute the load. So uh, if you have any interest at all, please don't, don't hesitate to join the, the Slack channel or comment on the GitHub issue and I'll reach out to you or, or speak up now. <laughs> I'm curious what type of uh, assessment is involved? Like I've not done any uh, assessments previously, so I'm just curious what does the work involve? Yeah, so the process that, that we here in the SIG have laid out as the, the assessment process is really reviewing uh, documentation provided by the, the project, in this case, Cloud Custodian, uh, on how they manage security, how their, how their project aligns with some of the, the common practices, the CII initiatives. Um, and you know, we as a team will review that documentation, see that it maps to expectations, discuss what those expectations are, and then really come back with a, a, some feedback to the project that we will review with the TOC uh, and present to the TOC. And uh, you know, what, what came out of that in, in previous uh, assessment rounds with folks like uh, OPA and uh, Cloak and such is a set of maybe concrete recommendations around either documentation or uh, in, in implementing different CII initiative improvements, you know, getting to a, a certain badge or uh, adding a, some additional tooling or, and I think in a couple of cases, some GitHub issues to the project around a particular threat that was identified. I see, yeah, that, that helps a lot. And I think Brandon sent some links as well. So I'll check out those, uh, definitely sounds interesting. I'll reach out to you on directly on Slack for that. Great, fantastic, thank you. Okay, with that exchange, we've covered all the items we have on the agenda so far for today. So at this point, I'd just like to open the floor if anyone would like to bring up any specific PRs that require attention, or if there's anything else that needs to be raised, here's your chance. Yeah, I just thought, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, I want to just add a quick note. Um, I think for, for those that are new, um, that we have a new members um, kind of section that's in the README, that should be helpful. Um, also, um, there were mentions of Slack um, as well. So we have on CNCF um, Slack and the channel is SIG-Security. And within that channel, actually, if you go into um go into one of the um the pins as well there are a couple of sub um slack channels six security events trash um all of those things um so those um are about specific things for example six security events is uh, for cloud native security day and stuff like that uh, there are a few that are not there right now i will try and post it in such as um there's some um, about the white paper as well. I think I'll, I'll update that. But the Slack channel is also a good resource and feel free to just ask questions and then uh, you know, we'll try our best to, to help out and provide any clarification. Thanks, Brandon. Maybe I had a question. I wanted to follow up on a comment that Mark made. Sorry, I didn't follow the latter part of your argument. Uh, you mentioned that there are these standards and there are some tools and those tools are not quite effective or they don't work. Could you elaborate on that, please? Sorry, TK. Was that for me? Underwood. Yeah, Mark, this is Vinay here. Sorry, I, I, I just wanted to I will try to clarify your the latter part of your argument. Uh, 
you mentioned something to the effect that the, there are standards, there are tools, but these tools are not quite effective, which actually opens up another kind of a, a threat vector for uh, enterprises. Is that what you said? Right. So the, the, there are two uh, artifacts released this last week by NIST. Uh, there are other ones that I wasn't calling out in this in this particular meeting that are worth talking about in this context, but I'm not I haven't listed them all there. I'm lazy, I guess. Uh, but of the two that they offered up here, one of them is actually, it's an installable executable and it tries to do a representation of a uh, supply chain. And what I, my critique of that simply is, uh, it doesn't try to represent the se semantic space or the technology space of the kind of relationships between these nodes. So a node that's a person and a node that is a third party application like say Salesforce, right? A, a SaaS application or, uh, or SAP hosted internally on a, you know, internal cloud or uh, like a security tools, another, yet another example. Now, typically those are cloud-based. So each one of these things, if you represent them as a node, uh, they have a complicated type of dependencies or in the AI world, we would call these attributes or properties. So it's an unsophisticated uh, graph representation, but because there's nothing else better right now, and because NIST is influential in this space, it's a good place to start to get people thinking about it. So it kind of depends on the sophistication of the organization, whether you can lead people along a useful, a fruitful path of saying, okay, this is, you know, a starting point. Now, maybe we can identify our risk register where we think our biggest threats are, our most unstable elements of our supply chain. That could be people you just onboarded in a regulated business like the one where I work. We're also worried about the ones where we get audited regularly because even though the risks might be low, we have to report out on a regular basis on those things. So that might be elevated concern if the risk is low. So trying to do a better assessment of that graph then becomes a worthwhile enterprise. Um, but then a deeper dive looks at things like threat models and how do you share information like intelligence that you might have you know in a fortune 500 organization or in a large government organization with people down your supply chain you know do you share it directly and just say we heard about this threat and here it is you know fyi you might actually not be permitted to do that in your proprietary agreements with your contractors because that they're selling that to you you can't just give it away to someone else also, you might have information where you don't want to tell them about your own vulnerabilities, right? Because you have uh, information sharing restrictions. So there's a filter going on that's bi-directional. And so uh, although you really want to automate alerting up and down the supply chain, realistically, that's not feasible in many settings. You need to, you know, both have contractual and also automated intermediaries. Think of these as agents in a kind of AI way these agents need to be intermediaries between your principles of sharing with the supply chain and vice versa. So all of this is happening in a mix where we're all trying to automate things in order to be more efficient and deal with the deluge of alerts. Uh, and traditionally there is no automated up and down chain alerting in information security. This is kind of a, uh, you know, you get on the phone with talk to some and talk to somebody or you get on Slack and you tell them, hey, we heard about this bad actor and they might be going after you too. And occasionally you might have sector-wide sharing like uh, utility sector or finance, you know, and they have their own interest groups. But that's not real time. It tends to be, you know, periodic meetings and, and that sort of thing. So that's the stuff I know about. I know there's stuff that's dark sharing that goes on that's besides that. But, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the ethos of cloud native, you really want to have full transparency about supply chain information sharing and vulnerability. So that's a longer version of, of this topic, which is a deep one. Got it. Thank you so much. So oh, great sure. framework, but oper operationalization uh, is, uh, uh, it's a very tall uh, ask. Well, to that Thank point, and to underscore what you were saying, Mark, there, there is sharing that's going on, but from what I've seen firsthand, that takes more of the approach of, hey, you know, you guys send your your SIM alerts to my SIM, and there doesn't there's not a lot of structure to that. So having some sort of graphic or 
graph structure to you know what alerts am I sending you and what am I supposed to do with that on the receiving end and how does that map to my you know ATO or how does that map to my risk conmon I mean I, I haven't seen anything that that specific or concrete that would help me operationalize what am I supposed to do with this this fire hose of events that I'm getting from my vendors or that I'm asking my vendors to give me. See, that brings up a great point. I mean, I don't know if we have time, but maybe just one last comment on that is there is, is there a, there is no open standard, right? Even all the threat data, Intel, etc., across so many different providers, it's all proprietary. Is there like an open source or, or open standard rather for threat that can actually, so you know, here is the format, here's how it looks, here's how I can ingest it, and here is how I can operationalize it. Does anybody know of anything? Is that, I don't know if it's threat, but is Ogle, XC, CDF, I think maybe some of that. Um, I have to go refresh whether they have specific mappings. Um, there threat. is actually, as I recall, MITRE has some standards around threat intelligence, information and threat data. I mean, there's the CBS, there's the scoring uh, mechanisms um, like CBS S3, CWEs, stuff like that, um, where you have calculators, but you're talking about the actual format of the information and how it's uh, transferred, correct? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's I, an I, OASIS yeah. standard, but it, it never really got hold, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, which standard? It's an OASIS standard for uh, cyber ops interoperability that tries to do that, but. I think the current best hope for that is the the MITRE Universal Ontology project and you know what they come out from that. So that's a derivative of the other MITRE projects, but they're trying to be a little more formal about it. I I, I try to keep track of the stand where that is, but it, it's not usable, and none of the vendors are doing anything with it beyond trying to do attack MITRE attack mapping. I mean, there is sticks, right? And that was the one that comes to my mind on the threat intel side. I thought they had something for um, the way you collect um, specific uh, testing output. I, I'm not finding it though. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, the challenge is, there's so many challenges with this. You know, do you trust information you get up and down the supply chain? And uh, you know, I, there's the reputation problem, there's the standardization problem, uh, and also the the nature of the threat depends on what you do as a business, right? So the supply chain threat for healthcare is not the same as the one you have for uh, a finance business. And even in finance, it's not the same between uh, the, uh, the credit markets like uh, credit card offerings and uh, uh, the the venture capital folks, right? It's, uh, you know, there they've got a big logging standard around what they're trying to do there that's got federal funding, but uh, that turns out not to be very usable for somebody that, that sells credit cards. So there's a domain dependent part of this that's, that's important too. I mean, there is there is some uh, open source things I think we all know of. That's the uh, OWASP, which is the application related security threats. So there is a good log there, and it's continuously being updated online community. And my uh, just like my there. Okay, we got a 10 uh, second uh, gap of crickets. Uh, is there anything else anyone else, yeah, pardon, would like to add or bring up? Yeah, if there was interest in this general topic, you know, I could try to put together, you know, a more comprehensive presentation and walk through that. Uh, you know, I really did do some more homework instead of this slapdash presentation I just laid on you. I would be interested in, in seeing that. Uh, Ma, can I open a presentation issue and assign it to you? All right, thank you. Yeah, we'll work on the dates, TBD, right? <laughs> yep. Okay, at that point, I think we've uh, covered all the major points and gave everyone a good chance to 
I, I think I see one or two more people that weren't on the call initially. So before you wrap things up, if there's anyone that's joined partway through, if you would like to introduce yourself, whether you're a new member or just getting to know SIG Security or an existing member, uh, feel free to grab the mic now if you'd like to. I see Kapil there. Would you like to grab the mic? I'm good. All right. In that case, that's a wrap for today. We'll see you everyone next week. And until then, stay healthy. Cheers. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you.